Okay, so in this video, we're going to explore a geometric proof for the limit as theta approaches zero of the function sine of theta on theta. Now, you may have in the past looked at this function graphically, and let's uh, display a graph of this function now. So here's a graph of sine theta divided by theta. As you can see, it's an even function. So a negative value of theta would give the same value as a positive value of theta. So these dashed vertical magenta lines denote the value of theta at negative pi on 2 and positive pi on 2. And as you can see here, as we approach the y-axis, or theta equals 0, the function is undefined because uh, we cannot divide by 0. But visually, you could see that as we approach the value theta equals 0 from both the right and the left, so from the positive side and the negative side, you can see that even though the value of this function is not defined at theta equals 0, we still approach the limit L equals 1. Okay, we can back this up by constructing a table of values as well. So I'll display a table of values now. So instead of theta, I'll just use x instead. And as you can see, as we approach closer and closer to zero from both sides, from the positive and the negative side, the values of the function become arbitrarily close to the value one. So that also gives extra credence that the limit as we get closer to zero of the function sine of x on x or sine of theta on theta is equal to one. However, these are not considered to be formal proofs and even together, the visual and the table would not be considered robust enough as a proof. So let's explore now the geometric proof that I'm talking about. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to construct a sector of a circle Okay, so here's my slice of a pizza. So in this circle, we have a central angle theta. Let's label the points on the arc as A and B. And let's set the radius of this circle to be 1. So this side here is equal to 1. Let's label the origin as well. And the horizontal line also has a value of 1. What I'm going to do is first calculate this arc length a b so we have the arc length a b arc a b is equal to the radius times the angle in radians theta so with r being equal to 1 it's simply equal to theta let's now construct a vertical line from the point b to the horizontal line o a so we form a right angle and let's call this point here point c so now the length of the line CB, which I'll denote as the absolute value of CB, is equal to sine theta, because from basic trigonometry, we know that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, with the hypotenuse being equal to 1. Sine theta would just be CB over 1, which is equal to the absolute value of CB. Finally, let's draw a bigger triangle, and for the vertical side of this triangle, it's going to be a vertical tangent line from the point A, and the rest of the triangle will be an extension from the point B, and it's going to be parallel to the line OB. Let's call this point up here point D. So remember the line BD is parallel to the line OB, such that we form this outer triangle that encompasses the sector of the circle and the smaller triangle that is formed by OBC. So now let's find the length of the line AD. So the length of the line AD, the absolute value of AD, is equal to, well let's see, AD is opposite to the angle. The line OA is adjacent to the angle. So by trigonometry, 
tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, with OA being equal to 1, the vertical line AD is simply equal to tan theta. So these are the important pieces of the puzzle, the three important pieces of the puzzle that we are going to use as our geometric proof, and they are all to do with lengths of lines or curves. So let's write them in order from largest to smallest, because we can see here the biggest triangle, which encompasses the circular sector and the smaller triangle, will obviously have the biggest side. So AD is greater than or equal to the arc length of AB. which is greater than or equal to the side of the smaller triangle CB. And the reason why we use greater than or equal to is because you'll see as theta approaches zero, these lengths all approach equality. So here the absolute value of AD is equal to tan theta, which is greater than or equal to the arc length of AB, which equals theta which is greater than or equal to the absolute value of CB, which is equal to sine theta. Tan theta can be expressed as sine theta over cos theta. And let's copy the rest. So it's greater than or equal to theta, which is greater than or equal to sine theta. And now it's just a matter of manipulation because we can divide everything by sine theta and this inequality still is maintained. So let's do that. So we have if we divide 3 by sine theta, we have 1 over cos theta, which is greater than or equal to theta over sine theta, which is greater than or equal to 1, because sine theta divided by sine theta is equal to 1. And this entire relationship is valid for all values of theta between negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, except for when theta equals 0. So let me say that, comma for theta not equal to zero. So what that means is I could have drawn this triangle upside down and used a negative value of theta, but geometrically it would not have made a difference. Okay, so let's now take this expression and invert it. So what that means is I take the reciprocal of all the terms, and if I do that I have to reverse the inequality. So the first one is inverted to cosine theta, the inequality is reversed, so cosine theta is less than or equal to sine theta on theta, which is less than or equal to 1. So it's starting to look like now that we can use the squeeze theorem, because if we apply the limit to each of these terms, we apply the limit as theta approaches 0 of cos theta. Let's just approach everything from a positive side first is less than or equal to the limit as theta approaches 0 plus of sine theta over theta, which is less than or equal to the limit as theta approaches 0 plus of 1. So let's see what happens here because the limit as theta approaches 0 of 1 is always going to be equal to 1, because 1 being constant. The limit as theta approaches 0 of cos theta is also equal to 1 because we know that the value of cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So we've got a squeeze here where the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta on theta is greater than or equal to 1 and is also less than or equal to 1. So therefore, by the squeeze principle, or the squeeze theorem, the limit as theta approaches 0 from the positive side of sine theta on theta must also be equal to 1. So we say that by the squeeze theorem. Now I mentioned at the start that sine theta on theta is an even function, which means it doesn't matter from which side you approach the limit, it is still going to have the same value. So I can get rid of this plus here and just say that the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta on theta is equal to 1. So thus we have used geometry to prove this limit, 
that'll do it for this video. If you found it useful, give me a like and share it on social media with your friends and make this channel famous. If you're new here, please subscribe and you'll be updated with new videos that might help you with your studies. And please, if you can afford to make any small donation, I'd really appreciate that because that'll help me a lot to make more videos for you. And you can do that via PayPal in the link in the description below. Thank you, thank you. For now, best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.